Tonight is Thursday, January 28th, 2021. This is a meeting of the Lake Street Improvement Committee. Is there a motion to call the meeting to order? Your motion, Eric Aruda. Second. Second, please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. The motion, uh, Aye. the meeting is now open. Thank you very much. Just roll call uh, Scott Daggett. Here. Eric Aruda. Here. Gary Coppa. Here. And Dave DeVignan. Here. Great. Thank you very much. Um, just one item of business, uh, gentlemen, is that. At, uh, we the board of selectmen did appropriate a sum of funds, uh, a sum of money to uh, provide us with a um, with some secretarial help, and so I've uh, received a few resumes, some really good candidates up and down the board. Um, but I'd like to uh, recommend Miss Amanda Baptiste. Some of you know Amanda already. She's a town resident. Uh, she's done some work with the ZBA and the planning board. Also was a uh, worked for the Board of Selectmen years ago um, and has expressed an interest and understands the ins and outs and, and is already on the payroll so we don't have to uh, create another, uh, you know, go through that process there. So if you gentlemen are okay with that, uh, you could have a motion to approve, um, to appoint Amanda Baptiste. Motion. Make a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Motion carries. Um, so. I'd like to ask Scott to provide us, he's done some work uh, with Solitude. Um, he has some information he'd like to share on the status of, of, the, uh, of the ponds, on uh, you know, how we're gonna control the algae. And um, so we'll turn it over to Scott. And then the initial uh, point of this meeting was to get some brainstorming going uh, around how we might wanna beautify uh, the Lake Street campus area um, and then, so we'll get into that conversation. Maybe we can tackle it by, um, again, this is, there's no such thing as a bad idea. It's a wish list of, you know, we could pull it off. What would we love to see there? Um, and then, so we'll get into that a little bit. So Scott, if you can give us an update on where we stand and uh, with, regarding the water restoration. Sure, so um, about two weeks ago, I received the water quality report from Solitude and I believe I forwarded it to you, David. And uh, surprisingly in that water quality report, uh, the one thing that we thought was gonna be a problem really isn't, and that's the nitrates. Uh, we figured that the, the weed growth was growing ex exponentially because of the nitrates that would be filtering in from the, up, from the cranberry bogs that are upstream. Uh, and surprisingly, the, uh, the nitrates between the 2010 water quality report and the 2020 quality report actually decreased a little bit. So that, that's a bit of a surprise. Um, um, I spoke to the guy who actually did the water quality testing and he says, you know, sometimes that could be based on the time of year that you're doing it because, uh, you know, the cranberries have already been harvested. So you're not going to get too much uh, you know, wash over from any of the insecticides or any of the uh, uh, fertilizers that they're going to be using. But seeing how the water quality report from 2010 was done in February and uh, the 2020 report was done in November, uh, you can pretty much compare apples to apples. And, you know, surprisingly, the nitrates are down. So uh, I, I just think that the ponds themselves you know, have been, you know, the, the weeds within the ponds have been growing, you know, unabated uh, where, you know, no one's actually done anything to, to slow them down. Uh, they uh, asked me for some information uh, concerning the ponds. Uh, I expressed to them that what we're looking for is uh, some type of a cost estimate for the weed removal of each pond individually. And uh, Tom Smith Pond, which is the smaller of the four ponds, uh, they're actually going to dredge that. Uh, there, there's, there's no need to treat the weeds or, or do any kind of weed removal because they're just going to dredge it because it's, if any of you have ever actually driven down Lake Street and looked at the small pond, you'll see that in the middle of the pond, you know, there's sediment that's actually, you know, above the water surface. So, uh, you know, they're going to give us a cost estimate for that pond for dredging. And uh, I mentioned to them that 
Uh, we ourselves at the, you know, the DPW can actually truck it off site. Uh, some people actually use the sediment and, and the, uh, uh, the weeds that have been removed for fertilizer. So I believe there's probably farms in town that can actually use that. Um, but right now uh, with solitude, uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from them concerning uh, cost and estimates on the uh, the weed removal of each pond. Uh, and also, I think in the water quality report, they did mention uh, treatment for algae. Because uh, on page on page six of the water quality report, uh, they do mention algae management. I guess algae wasn't too bad out there, um, which is a good thing. Uh, but I believe that they uh, they want to treat it with some kind of an algicide, just to keep it under control so it doesn't get out of control. Uh, and they also recommended some type of phosphorus management. I believe the phosphorus levels were within... Um, phosphorus levels were pretty low. Uh, so it was within range of pond water or from how they describe it, but I believe they want to manage that just so, uh, you know, they can improve the water quality and, uh, you know, keep that under control too. So, uh, like I said, I'm still waiting to hear from them uh, for a cost estimate. And as soon as I get uh, that information, I'll be forwarding it to uh, the rest of the committee. Okay. I, I think that's great work, Scott. And I think one of the things we'd like to do, obviously, for the committee to um, accept the report, and then we'll have to vote on, you know, how far, um, you know, how involved we get with the remediation. Do we do all four at the same time or whatever? I think it would be really helpful if we could press forward to, to have them zoom in um, and make a presentation uh, to, the, to the committee and to the residents. I think that would be really helpful. Um, you know, you you being able to put it into layman's terms, I think is really helpful, but to see exactly, you know, to hear from Solitude um, and have them make that presentation, I think would be, um, would be great. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good suggestion. Uh, also, I did ask them, uh, I believe uh, the board had mentioned a while back whether or not we need to uh, alert um, or, or make aware to the abutters of the ponds uh, when the treatment is done. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, for health reasons, and they said that they go ahead and they do that themselves, oh, good. With, along okay. with the permitting act, uh, aspects of it. Uh, they, they expressed to me that it's only about a three-day period where uh, the major concern would be the cranberry bog growers, uh, that there would be a period of three days where they can't, they, they can't use the water to be able to, uh, you know, manage their bogs, but it's only a three-day period. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's something right. that, you know, we may have to contact some of the cranberry bog owners to find out when they do their regular maintenance or, uh, you know, whatever it is that they do the, to their crops on a seasonal basis, whether it's in the spring or summer, because right. uh, we want to make sure that it's not going to affect uh, the cranberry growers in, in any way. Sure. Okay. Good, good suggestion. So we'll flag that as a pending action item that we'll have to follow up on. So we've got Number one, is there, let's do this so um, Amanda will be watching this meeting after the fact. And then I think if we start taking some motions on things, that'll flag for her what we need to follow up on and we'll have it incorporated in our minutes. So is there a motion to uh, invite Solitude, um, ask Solitude to make a presentation to the committee on uh, their findings and uh, what their recommended um, plan of restoration is? Yeah, I'll make the motion. All right, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Great. Aye. Thank you. And then just as a uh, as a reminder, we'll, when that takes place, we'll talk to Solitude about who to reach out to and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so here's the fun stuff. And um, Mr. Uh, Ali Amaral has graciously um, offered to have Old Colony help us with some of the design um, and, and get some renderings uh, taken care of there. So what I was thinking, Al was gonna facilitate, but what I'm thinking is maybe we can go look at this from a couple, couple ways and I'll facilitate, I can take some notes um, and really let's just 
we have a budget, but let's just blue sky as if we what, what we would what our ideas are for that area, right? So what I'm thinking is maybe we can go in the in the various quadrants, if you will, so that Tom Davis Pond um, that really it's not conducive to fishing, I don't think. Um, it's just more of how do we beautify it? Can it be utilized for anything? So I'll, I'll let's keep this as a flow, free flowing discussion. Whoever wants to speak up on that, uh, I have some thoughts, but um, I'll save those for the end. And so Scott, uh, if you want to kick it off or Eric, whoever, you know, feel free to uh, uh, speak up. If I can just go right around the horn, if anybody has any ideas. I, uh, I, I think Tom Smith Pond would be, uh, I believe there is a little bit of fish that are in there. Uh, not a lot because it's, it's a shallow water pond. I believe its average depth is about a foot and a half to two feet. Um, and uh, there's not a water, lot of water flow that gets in there. I believe it's a pond that we could utilize for other things like during the winter time, you could you know, turn it into a skating rink uh, just because the, the depth yeah. that we propose. Oh, we have Al, great. Hey, thanks for joining Al. Um, I don't know when you, I, I had my head down. So we're just gonna go around the horn um, to talk about some ideas for the ponds. And I thought we would kind of approach it pond by pond or area by area from a beautification standpoint and then talk about that middle area that, uh, you know, sort of the parking lot and that uh, in between area. So we're talking about the Tom Smith pond, which is that small one, the real small one, um, that probably has is probably the least aesthetically pleasing um, when, when all the weeds are there. We talked about possibly dredging that to um, to make it somewhat serviceable. So Scott was talking about um, possible ice skating rink in the winter time. Obviously, it's you know cold weather related, but keep going, Scott. Okay, so uh, I, I think we were on you know in the discussion that uh, you know we could dredge that pond to a depth of about two and a half to three feet. Uh, which would make it ideal for you know an ice skating pond when uh, when it freezes over in the winter um and uh i, I think at one point uh, david you had mentioned you know maybe uh putting a fountain or something in the middle of it uh, I, I think one thing that we need to figure out about that pond uh is if it's interconnected somehow to the other ponds uh, one person on facebook uh, did mention to me that they believe that between the southwestern pond and that pond, that there's some type of a uh, gateway uh, that allows that's water to flow correct. through. Yeah, yeah, that that um, that's correct, Scott. Yeah, there's there was a culvert there. Um, it was probably just a metal pipe uh, that connected that small Tom Smith pond to the south pond. Um, I'm sure, I'm probably pretty sure by this time it's blocked up, um, just based upon the, the 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 vegetation growth that's in that that south pond. I mean that's in the um, actually really in the two areas where they were connected. You can if you if you go by you can see um, the old on the south pond. You can see where the culvert used to be. Um, there's like an inlet and an outlet outlet there. Uh, but there was there was at some time quite a bit of, of fish that was able to be habitable in that in that Tom Smith but you know, as you guys know and by looking at it um, it's, it's almost uh, almost impossible at this point but not but still probable but. Mm. so so I'm wondering if if this you know since you know the city of New Bedford pretty much managed those ponds uh, it, whether or not they have any plans that it can actually show us uh, you know, if those ponds are interconnected with piping culverts, we, we know that we know that the northwest and southwest pond, there, there's a culvert that's under Lake Street that everybody knows where it is. Uh, and there's one that goes from um, the northeast pond to the southeast pond. There's a culvert that goes diagonally across the street. Uh, but I'm just curious if, like uh, Eric had mentioned, that there is a connection between uh, the northeast pond and Tom Davis, and then Tom Davis to the southwest pond. I think th there must be some kind of connection there for water to be able to move around. So I guess this is again just throwing this out there for conversation's sake, and you know, from a safety standpoint, 
Um, but I see that smaller, that Tom Davis pond, possibly as, you know, again, we want to talk about traffic and this and that, and do we want to, do we want that to be an attraction, right? Or is it, we just want to make it aesthetically pleasing and make it look, look nice and, you know, clean it up around there, or could that be utilized perhaps because it's not very deep, um, wouldn't be deep, uh, as a, a rink or someplace for like a kid, a kitty area, you know, like, so parents could kind of teach their kids how to kayak there in a safe environment, or um, I'm not, I'm, again, this is just spitballing blue sky, right? Or we may want to say, well, you know what, crossing streets and, you know, that, that could be uh, tough to do. So I'll throw that out there for discussion, you know, for thoughts, like, could that be an area that's conducive to like, you know, call it Kitty's Cove when you put some picnic tables over there and it's kind of designated at a, as a, you know, preschool area or something like that. I don't know, just a thought, throw that out there for discussion purposes. Yeah, I, I would think for safety, for safety issues, that pond is relatively close to the street. Um, I'm not sure how much of a buffer there is between the pond and the edge of the street itself. So if you wanted to go the route where you wanted to do picnic areas or something like that, you may have to try to get easements from some of the landowners nearby where, you know, keep people away from the edge of the street. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it probably would be a good thing to consider for safety issues. Yeah, I think, I think there's a future for that. I think definitely for that, the uh, Tom Smith, um, I think, like you said, it's because of its depth. Uh, it may be uh, safe, you know, friendlier for, uh, you know, and more appealing to people who are starting out kayaking, things like that. Now we know that the DPW did a fantastic job uh, putting in the, the boulders and making some access areas for pedestrians to walk alongside the south and the north pond. And right now, the way that the, that small Tom Smith pond looks is uh there's there's residences there's there's residential property on on three sides of that and the lowest the lowest grade is lake street to there um and everything is, is uh you know kind of steps up off of that uh to the back to the back three sides of, of that pond um but if if it was a question of it was being dredged and almost reshaping that pond um it, you know, I think there is, is a possibility, especially for offloading some of the, the dredgements, you know, however that happens, that maybe there's a landing area or something that has to be put into place, you know, at some point or in the future, uh, that might be accessible uh, to be able to launch uh, a kayak or a boat or, or some type of education program over there. Um, and then if, that, if, the, if the road on the, uh, on the north side of that, on that uh, northeast pond, uh, again, if that gets widened out, then they could have access from the regular parking lot. I, I get, like you said, we're just just thinking here, but oh, they could have some, yeah. So they could just have some some access with a crosswalk to be able to cross there. Um, uh, I think I think there's a future for it for this in the summertime and in the winter. Uh, Gary or Dave? Yeah, Dave, uh, if you don't mind, um, I've been listening to that, and everybody's uh, got some legitimate points. My concern with that pond is uh, where it's located. There is literally no area for people to park yeah. the vehicle on the side of the road. So anyone that wants to utilize that pond as it stands right now, thought of people getting, um, uh, we found getting some sort of easement uh, from any local landowners would be having them park in the pond directly across the street from his parking lot, which is a diagonal walk across Lake Street around the bend and coming from down the hill. Um, which is not, especially if you want to use that for a small area for children. Uh, mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like a skating area, that pond would be a great size for a skating area, but how do you get the children safely there to and from? So I'm all for dredging it. I'm all for, this might be one of those things that why don't we clean the pond up, punt it down the line, we can revisit it at, once we see how it turns out. Yeah. But to put a, a, a master plan now, I think there's too many question marks and safety concern. I, I don't see how you can do that short of getting additional land around the pond. Okay, so there's uh, some sentiment of basically cleaning it up, getting it aesthetically pleasing, um, but consider that as a long range project to figure out how best it fits and what we can do there safely. So 
uh, not an immediate um, recreational opportunity, but more just just cleaning that area up, maybe with some, you know, cutting down some dead trees and, and some plantings and just some general things that might make it look pleasing and inviting in the area, right? Fair enough. Dave, uh, any, Dave DeVignan, any thoughts there in that regard? Does that make sense to you? Um, all good comments. Um, I would just uh, make one additional comment. You do have one house, their backyard is really right on top of that pond. Mm -hmm. Then you go around to the right of that house is another one. You never know, you might have a butter opposition to creating any kind of skating rink. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, clean it out, I'm sure they'd be all for it, especially yeah. if you know, the pond can have fish in it again, but keep that in mind, you know, that might be difficult. And the access is definitely an issue. Dredging it, they would probably create the access ramp that we would need you know, for access in the future. But I, I, uh, I'm with Gary on that, that uh, it's troubling where people would park. You know how they just, you'll see them park right on the side of the road and leave it there. And then they're blocking up half the road. It's a dangerous hill. Uh, it's a scary, it's a scary stretch of road right there because of that mm -hmm. hill. You know? Yep. Yep. No, I think that, that look, and this is why we're having these discussions is because we want to, you know, what I'm throwing out there is for to be shot down, you know, play devil's advocate. And then I think we can get to a point where we've got three great bodies of water that we can utilize for different things. And I think the thing that really sticks out to residents is when you're in the summer, you just see how nasty it looks. Um, yeah. So if we can um, clean it up, make it look nice, um, you know, keep the water flowing. Uh, I think that could be a win right there. Some signage so people know, you know, we could put a nice sign that says Tom Smith Pond. Um, there so people kind of know what that is and a little history behind it. Uh, Al, anything on, any thoughts on your end? Is that, that um, so I know you were offered to facilitate, but is there anything you want to see, uh, you know, there and, and how we might be able to tackle that? Um, well, I've been listening and taking notes. Okay. Um, seems like everybody has a, a good perspective on kind of the use of that pond and you know, the good and the bad and, and how to go about it. So um, I'm still kind of uh, absorbing a lot of the information, okay. Great. And processing it and keep keeping some notes here. Okay. Um, and Perfect. just kind of thinking long-term plan. All right. So why don't we go across the street uh, to the, I don't know if that pond has a name, um, but it's sort of the, we'll call it the mid-major. It's not quite uh, a big one, but it's, um, it seems like it's ripe for potential for things such as kayaking. Uh, I can't speak to the fishing piece of it. I don't know if there's fish there, but it just seems like it's a great opportunity. And we also, you know, talked about possibly cleaning out area to have some trails along that shore. So I'll throw that out there. Those are ideas that we've heard before. So why don't we start off with Dave DeVignan uh, this time, this time around and, uh, get your thoughts on what, in a perfect world, if that was your backyard, what would you want to do with it? This is the pond directly across the street from Tom Davis? Yes. So if, you, if you're coming down Lake Street from Maine, it's on yep. the right. Uh, it has access to a parking lot. There's some area dug out where I think people try to put some canoes or kayaks into in there, but it's, really, it's a really nice property that could, has tons of tons of potential. It does. Um, I've used that pond quite extensively. They have two nice areas. Well, one not so nice, but we have two boat, boat launch areas that we, we can improve. Um, I think the circular drive of the tree in the middle is really nice. I think that can be beautified. I think we can create some formal parking for that pond on that whole side, you know, to um, people park in the grass. But we, you know, there's a lot of work to be done on that pond. Dan and I, I'm sure, would, would run wild with that uh, idea. Um, and again, that pond needs to be, uh, you know, the weeds need to come out. Um, and, you know, I have kind of a grand scheme that when you call it pie in the sky, mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't really look at that pond, but why not? It doesn't matter. I get this concept in my head of instead of um, everybody fishing off the shoulder of the road, which is dangerous. I mean, I love what we've done, Dan done down there, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not the ideal. What if we had this? Um, you know, a pile supported pier which ran parallel to the road all along the edge so that everybody, everybody can fish sort of in more than to the middle, but people can still go on the shoulder and fish close to shore if they wanted to. Um, I know it's, 
there are ways to do it. And that, that, that's kind of where um, my head's at, but I'll get into that, you know, down the road more when Al has some, some sort of CAD drawing that I could sit down and, and throw my ideas into. Um, I don't know if it would work for that pond or not, but why not? You know, that, that's kind of what I was looking at. Improve the boat ramp, uh, provide some, some parking and a nice picnic area around that, uh, around that big tree and um, some, do something to get people into the, the middle, towards the middle of the water, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Gary? So um, I actually love this pond for that, for that reason. There's so many things that we could do to utilize this pond better. Um, there is, unlike the other pond, there is, seems to be a section of area along the left side of that pond, right next to the parking lot, going north that we could utilize, I would think, to do, like you said, uh, trails like they did at the Cushion Sawmill property, where you mm -hmm. could have there, where we could uh, clean out, and Dan would be excellent at that, uh, just seeing what he's done in the past. Um, so little different areas of fish. Obviously, this goes without being uh, said, we have to clean the weeds out and, and maybe possibly dredge a little bit in there. I'm not sure whatever they'll, they'll find once we look at the fonts closer. But we have an area of land there that we could actually utilize to our advantage. Um, Dave mentioned the pier, and we could actually build up the side of that road there with guardrails, like we did on the north pond and the south pond on that pond as well. Um, if we dredge that a little bit, it might get a little bit deeper. We could utilize that pond a lot better. There's parking areas there. We could put lights in those parking lots. We could put hey, lights along the trails for the solar lights or, or things like that. That pond, that pond's got a lot of possibilities. If we, if the pie in the sky, like you said, if, if everything, you know, the blue skies, we could do different things with that pond. Yeah, I agree. Eric, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, with that, with that north, north, uh, east pond that we're talking about, um, I don't know the, the numbers for sure. Uh, that's probably the second shallowest pond um, out of all, out of all, all four. Um, again, uh, it's been a great spot for, for people to ice skate on. Uh, that's been a, a really good one because it does freeze up sooner than the rest. Um, and they can utilize the parking lot. Um, so in the wintertime, um, you know, that it's been used, used well there. Um, the, there is fish in that pond. Um, there's no question. And I think when it comes to uh, kind of the education or, or, or even, even the entertainment of uh, kayaking or whatever it may be, or, or, or a small rowboat or something like that. If you want to take your kids out there, the, the great thing about fishing a lot of times, um, or, or just being out in a boat, it doesn't even have to be fishing. There could be a lot of different things uh, that you can do out in the water, but it really is a destination. And with that pond being the size that it is, um, there's always a destination because you can get to the other side of that pond fairly easily. Um, and if, if your parent taking a child out there or, or, a relative or just an adult taking a child out there, um, to be able to explore that, um, but to be able to have that access, uh, cleaned up and then to be able to have the areas where if you want to, to, you know, to have the lunch, uh, have the cars parked appropriately. So it's not, you know, you're not trying to drive over different things or, or drive around different you know, different vehicles or, or ruin the, the, the habitat outside of the lake. Um, yeah. And I think because of its size, uh, I think depending upon what we start on first, um, you know, if we look at, at, at the end goals um, with looking at that pond um, as kind of like a go-to, uh, um, you know, obviously uh, if we, we start with start small with that, may, maybe I'm, I'm just saying, but if we just, I mean, obviously you have to do things as a group to be able to maximize, you know, whatever the funds or the efforts uh, but it just, it'd be a good pulse check to be able to see how, how things come along, um, to just be, to be able to move forward. Okay, great. Scott. Um, I know that pond pretty well. I fish it a lot. Uh, I know it's, it's got about an average depth of about six feet. Yeah. Uh, I know Gary mentioned about, uh, possibly, um, dredging it. Uh, solitude did make that suggestion to me. Uh, when they went out there to evaluate the ponds. They also evaluated at the time that they did the water quality study. And uh, they suggested that that area along the road uh, should be dredged uh, so that we got a little bit more depth there. So that would be a great suggestion like Gary had said, where, you know, 
providing more fishing along that road, but maybe kind of pushing it away from the road a bit and putting, you know, some kind of a dock or something there. Um, the two boat ramps that are there, uh, one of them uh, was graveled out at one point, uh, which is the one that most people do use when they're launching kayaks. It probably needs to be better maintained. The other one, which is uh, towards the far corner uh, where everybody parks, uh, that one is just, you know, full of weeds. Uh, it's a place where people launch because it's a nice clear spot, but that probably would need to be managed as well. Maybe throw some more gravel down in there so that, you know, it kind of controls the weeds makes it easier for people to, to back in a trailer if they're you know launching a John boat or something to that effect. Um, the walking trails are a great suggestion. I think that would be fantastic over there. Um, the parking there, parking over there is pretty adequate. Um, you know, I think there's a whole, whole bunch of great suggestions that everybody's pretty much made about that pond. Once we get that pond cleaned up, uh, one suggestion might be that unsightly stump that's in the middle of the pond. Uh, you know, maybe we can get solitude to remove that somehow, you know, get it out of there because it's just, it, it's unsightly. Uh, somebody ended up dumping it there because I never saw it there before uh, up until I think it was last year, maybe the year before, it just kind of mysteriously just appeared there one day. Um, but yeah, I, that pond's got a lot of great potential. Uh, just like everyone said, there's a lot that we can actually do with it. It's, a lot it's of upside there. And um, go ahead, Scott, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it, it's a good pond for ice fishing too, uh, because uh, like Eric said, it's shallower than the other two ponds uh, because the depth is around six feet. There's no moving water. So once you get it, decent amount of ice, it's a pretty safe pond to ice fish on. You don't have to worry about any springs or moving water actually making the ice a little bit shallower. So it, it's, that pond's got a lot of great potential. And I think, you know, so with that pond there, that probably has the most upside for all ranges of use, right? For young, older, whatever. Um, and so, you know, like little things that I would I think as a parent or even just somebody going out there, signage that in, you know, says what the depth is, what the deepest part of, it, of the, the pond is. And you know, I think those little subtlety things, and Eric, you talked about boating safety, you know, maybe that becomes sort of the area where you have signage and you can do those types of courses out there perhaps, you know, um, that's a, you know, a long range thing, but that really lends itself to that type of information. And I think if you can, some we can put that type of signage there, um, I think would just help take the mystery out of it, right? Even to go ice skating, you say, geez, wow. You don't know if it's, I, I think if the, the average person drove by there, they don't know if it's 10 feet deep, four feet deep or two feet deep, right? And so I think that type of information would be useful uh, to people. Um, and, you know, maybe we designate it as kayakers cove or something like that with some really nice you know signage and something catchy to draw people to it uh, to utilize it and get those boat ramps where they need to be um, you know maybe it's uh, and I've seen in other towns where these kayak launches are you got like PVC on each side so it's almost like a stable and it makes it a lot easier for people to get in and out and you're not you know you're not trying to uh, negotiate the kayak and you know, tip and this and that. It's like a really nice seamless uh, thing there. And, you know, I think the idea of some, um, you know, the, the solar and uh, some picnic tables in that area and, uh, you know, the dedicated parking, I think is, is, is makes a ton of sense. And so, uh, Alan, I don't know if you got all that, um, but I think, uh, you know, we got some good ideas there and that that uh, probably be the, the, the hub of activity and, and learning right there. I think that's uh, really cool. If I may, I, I would also suggest maybe a security camera because I know that one particular location there, you know, people like to dump stuff there pretty mm -hmm. often. Uh, and, and, you know, we want to try to prevent it from becoming unsightly. I, I know recently there's probably not much dumping there because I believe 
you know, the patrols have pretty much, you know, scared most people away from doing that, but that may be something that we may want to consider just because that little area that's tucked away in the corner, you know, there's always something that's getting dumped there, whether it's TVs or mattresses or who knows what. Okay. All right. Dave, Dave did I talk on that? Yeah, of course. Um, that's a great point, Scott. Um, I've mentioned this numerous times in past meetings that those parking lots need to be lit up. Uh, it's that alone would deter a lot of uh, vandalism, uh, legal dumping, uh, people doing illicit things in the dock. Those five, we need to figure out a way to both parking lots to be lit uh, some way, somehow. That would deter a lot of it. I mean, we do our best to patrol that area. Unfortunately, like you know, every other town in Massachusetts, we're limited on resources. Um, but I think if there was more lighting in that area, a lot of those problems would go away. Okay. All right. So why don't we uh, go to the, we'll call it the beach, right? Um, for lack of a better term. And we'll uh, start off with Eric. Your thoughts regarding that beach area. Is it, do we enhance it? To make it more of a beach like it was when you know you hear so many stories of people saying hey this was a beach when i was a kid and that could be the area that we want to encourage that type of activity there uh you know becomes a place where you know parks and rec get behind that and they run some programs there as well i don't know so eric uh, thoughts on that area there yeah it's fun it's funny that uh, you mentioned some of those things now my sister uh a few years back now she was a lifeguard at that and that was the old town beach um and um uh, when it when it uh closed down obviously the the uh, the lifeguards everybody went uh, you know with that um but uh as a recent uh, some sand has been brought in um I, again as just a quick simple fix um and they and uh, dpw visually has done a good job making it look better uh and like gary said lighting is important but that's this pond on the north side, the north pond where the beat town beach is, or the old town beach, um, I would probably say it's it's more of an advanced pond. Uh, it's the largest of all of them. Um, I know Scott would probably be able to talk a lot on that. Um, and uh, you know, just around that area too, uh, it'd be it'd be great to be able to, with with that shoreline. I, I mean, it's there's some very great pictures that come out off that shoreline uh, the sunsets uh kind of across the water right there um it, it's just a it's, a it's a very pretty spot um and again it's just obviously we're talking about cleaning it up conservation um one of the big things that i like to focus on too uh, or, or think about too is just advocacy advocacy you know as, as us, obviously we're all advocates right now for it that's why we're here um but to be able to build that um too i was just kind of tucking that in, in the end of my end of my thoughts here but um just to be advocates for for what we're doing obviously you know we're not trying to, to encroach on anybody's property or anything like that we're just trying to make it visually better and, and just just make it a better place uh kind of restore protect the area um and ultimately you know keep something that's sustainable that's enjoyable for the years to come so um so i mean i think a lot of the things that we would do in that northeast pond it would be we kind of have that same area uh, same amount of uh Kind of surface area on the shoreline to be able to do that and then obviously exploring the waters is is, is, a, is a much broader that's a much broader pond uh, do you, um uh, scott you guys like to fish do you feel that those uh, those docks that we've put out there are those do they get used so they uh would you know if we had more of those and more of an interlocking system or you know is that something worth well what we have there is fine any thoughts there yeah, I've, I've noticed that since the docks have been installed, or that one dock has been installed, it does get a lot of use. Uh, and, and I see uh, a lot of adults with their children on that dock, uh, you know, because they can sit on the edge and, you know, feel closer to the water, act, you know, compared to standing on the shoreline. And, you know, I, I see a lot of adults and children, uh, or adults with children using that. Uh, and, and once we get that area cleaned up with weeds, it'll probably become more popular. Uh, now you were talking about the size of that pond. That pond is approximately 56 acres. It's the largest of, of the four ponds. Um, it's got an average depth 
I, I believe that there's a channel that goes from the very northernmost part of that pond and it goes all the way down to that culvert. And I was once told that it's about 11 or 12 feet deep. Uh, so it, it's got some pretty good depth. There is great fish in there. Um, with signage, I know people have been mentioning signage, putting at some of these ponds. It may be a really good idea to put like the different species of animals that you'll see there like swans. Uh, there was a person on Facebook today that posted, uh, they saw an otter at that pond. Uh, which is, you know, pretty amazing because I've, I've never seen an otter. I've seen uh, muskrats and, and, and other uh, aquatic mammals that swim around, but I've never seen an otter there. So that's, you know, it, signage with different fish species, uh, you know, information about the depth and the size of the pond and, uh, you know, maybe what the pond is actually used for because a lot of cranberry bro uh, growers use that pond for irrigation. Uh, that would be a plus. Uh, the beach area looks really good. Um, it could probably be, you know, maintained, uh, you know, picking up with, you know, litter pickup and, and uh, I wouldn't naturally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say to the effect of, you know, raking and making it look nice all the time, but, uh, you know, maybe policing it a little more often just to make sure that, you know, people aren't just tossing trash everywhere because that area gets a lot more use uh, than the other three ponds combined. Mm -hmm. So, so you're saying 56 acres, um, again, blue skying, provided we could figure out how to, if we needed permit, if there was somebody, some enterprising person in town who had a pontoon boat and wanted to do, you know, strolls around the lake, uh, or something like that, you know, it might be conducive to, to something fun like that, but you know, sunsets, mm. you know, I can see maybe going for a little pontoon ride around there at the, the sunset time, kind of like what they have at the New Bedford Harbor with the boat tours. Yeah, um, that's one thing that we need to look into because I've, I've been told conflicting things about that pond when it comes to boating. Mm -hmm. uh, some people you speak to say, no, you can't use outboard motors there. And some people I speak to say, yeah, you can use outboard motors there. I don't know if it was a bylaw that's in the town or if it's a bylaw that was with mm -hmm. the city of New Bedford. Um, Cause I know th there are people that have fishing tournaments there every year, twice a year sometimes. Uh, and you'll see some big boats, you know, 16, 17, 18 right. foot fiberglass, 200, you know, 200 horsepower outboards you know, zipping up and down that pond. Uh, so something like you suggest with, you know, somebody wanted to be creative and, you know, pontoon boat and, you know, take people for a ride up and down the pond or whatnot. Uh, that'd be a, you know, a nice idea. Uh, but that's something we should look into uh, concerning if there's any kind of a bylaw on the book that actually states that outboards are prohibited. Okay. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard that. And, you know, I, I've talked to some people who say that having that type of activity is good to keep things circulated and yeah. it's not the worst thing in the world to have. Um, right. Certainly, it certainly helps with keeping the weed growth down because the outboards, you know, the props will just, you know, it, it's like getting a haircut. It'll, it'll just cut it down, keep it under control. The more traffic you get, the more under control it is. So, you know, what's kind of sticking out is definitely signage. Right, and we've got to be should at some point start thinking about, you know, like I'm just thinking here. We referred to it as the Old Town Beach, right? Maybe it's, you just call it that, well, <laughs> the Old Town yeah, Beach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something and as been... simple as that with some nice signage, and you put some Adirondack chairs out there on the, you know, on the uh, out in the sand, and next thing you know, a few people are sitting there, and somebody's reading, and another person, you know, they. they they see activity there and they say, okay, wow, well, I, I can go spend an afternoon there and hang out in the sand and, dip, you know, hang out there. So I don't know, maybe that's just calling it that and saying, hey, we're, we're open for business. Um, yeah. Some people yeah. might be a little hesitant. And, and in the early days of, of what, you know, when this committee formed, uh, when we were posting stuff on, on the Akushnet, All Things Akushnet Facebook page, uh, a lot of people were interested whether or not we could actually open that back up as a town beach. Uh, I don't know what the water quality issues would be concerning safe right. water to, you know, for swimming. Uh, but 
I don't know if that's something that we would want to pursue. Could be an aspirational goal down the road, you know, but for now, maybe it's, you know, just getting the beat, getting the sand, getting the weeds out of there, having a, a, a regular maintenance schedule um, where it's raked and, you know, it's, it looks nice. Maybe you expand the shoreline a little bit. Um, I don't know. Dave yeah. or, or uh, Gary, any thoughts there? I think it's, it kind of lends itself to just improving what's already there. And I kind of feel like that's what this whole project is about is just peeling off some of the calluses and uh, getting to its, getting back to its, uh, you know, uh, its roots in a way, um, that whole, that whole area, you know. Uh, any thoughts in that regard regarding the, the old town beach? I think we've kind of touched on it. Does that give you enough to work with Al, you think, uh, the ideas yeah. here? Yeah, I, I think what, when we're done, I'll kind of put together like a little summary mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be a document that anybody can add to. Okay. So if I missed anything in the notes and, and they're mostly going to be like bullet notes, you know, like these are the, these are the topics, these are the things that came up and anybody will be able to add to it, change it, modify it, whatever. It'll be kind of a working document. Um, I think with regards to the beach, I think, um, I think if it's, if it's going to be kind of open and used as a beach, ideally, and I know the water quality is a big issue, but if that can be a swimmable area, I think that would be a huge draw and a huge benefit to kind of reviving that area. Great, that's good. That's I think you know when we're talking about that area, that's a that's a long that's a goal. You know that would be a fun thing to do. Um, all right, so across the street, I mean that's probably the the biggest. Well, I mean along that heading towards uh, Peckham and Middle Road. I see people fishing there. Um, I think that, I don't know if we wanna to continue to encourage that or if that requires some additional safety measures to make it uh, you know, safer for folks, um, sort of that fishing area there. And then obviously the big, the, the big body of water there where there's a lot of activity fishing there. Um, I don't know, I got some thoughts, I guess it would be great to have some boat activity, but by the same token, you get some really nice homes along that area. And sometimes it's, it's, I don't know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you folks there. Like what, in that area there, what do you think, um, is there potential, are we maximizing the potential there or is it just right? And we just need to enhance. I think Dave, this is what you were talking about having some type of pipe, you know, some type of walkway almost in the water, right? Um, yes. So maybe Dave, so why don't you kick, you kick that off before, so I'll give you the floor on that one. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to see some sort of um, kayak, canoe, skiff launch. Uh, it's, I defer to the safety people such as Gary for that. I know it's, it's gonna be it's difficult. I don't know how we gotta get, somehow we gotta get some access. It's easy for folks to get into that pond. It's a big pond. It's absolutely beautiful from front to back. And uh, maybe across the street from where the entrance is, the parking lot, we're going to have to have a lot of safety measures in place. Maybe that's where somebody can pull in and back in. And I'm not sure how we do it, but somehow we got to get creative and get some access for boating into that pond. And I had this concept in my head of, uh, right, we, we, if you see like a pier coming off of the, uh, the road going into the pond, whatever the distance is, and then it then it follows the shoreline, you know, in both directions uh, to a certain degree, um, and people could fish. I think it'd be uh, it'd look fantastic. It'd be get everybody off the road, the edges of the road, uh, be a safety improvement. Um, so that's my main focus on that pond, you know, without going too far with it. It's almost like a boardwalk type thing, Dave, where it's deep enough where people can fish off of. Yeah. Um, so. That's a great concept. I mean, that's that's a great idea. Uh, hey, so, sorry, Eric. I'm sorry. So no. far, we've been giving these uh, ponds or areas these names. Can can we give this one a name just to keep things kind of organized? How about we call it the uh, the pump house pond? There you go. Everybody, anybody that fishes has been down the pump house, right? Yeah. That's what we call it anyway. All the locals. On most maps, it's uh, labeled South Pond. 
So boring. Right. right. I know it is. <laughs> There's no fun in that, right? Pump house pond slash south pond. How do we do that? We'll, uh... But, you know, stuff that gives it some character is pretty cool. You know, I think it's kind of cool. You know, Bill's that, uh, you know, where kids can say they want to, you know, when they're on their bikes, hey, meet me at the, you know, whatever. That's that's the fun of it. Um, I'll tell you what, one more thing on, on yeah. when you get to the other side of the pond, uh, something really cool from people don't even know it's there, the fish ladders. That's a that's a pretty cool uh, thing they built over there. If somehow we could provide, like if for boating, they pull up and they have a, a short distance to get over the, the the tough terrain to get onto that dirt road and and people can walk and go check it out you know because it's it's pretty cool uh you know that whole stretch it's untapped nobody even knows it's there unless you go to the pup house and you go walking down that path right. yeah so on that on that south pond a little bit of history on that um the the north pond uh north of lake street um that for the most part has, has been a pond as, as, as long as we can, you know, look at anything on the map. It's what, you know, one of the reasons why they call it Lake street. Uh, but when New Bedford came in um, and needed uh, a reservoir to be able to supply the city of New Bedford with water, they actually built the 25 foot dike wall down the backside of that South pond. Um, it's the deepest pond and in the deepest spot, we could see 24 feet on the depth um, in that, in that pond. It used to just be from Lake street, to the back, to a back corner of that South Lake was just a small stream that went through from the culvert that's that's existing there now. That, that culvert is higher than the bottom of of that North Pond, so that's why there was always a pond there, and then it would it would flow out. Once they built that dike wall down the end, it raised the water level all the way up, uh, you know, around that and through the middle of that pond. Um, if you had any depth finders or anything like that, you could see the original stream bed of where it meandered through um, to, from, from the culvert down, down to the start of the Accretionate River. And there's also still an existing stone wall of a couple of farm fields that were there that, that flow underneath from either, si from either side up to that stream um, that you can see. Uh, you, you can see it in, in, in depth. And we had a neighbor um, that actually had some scuba gear and that had gone down there and actually you know kind of investigated it and found out that that's really what it was and again it because it was a you know there were fields at one point yeah wow that's cool uh that fish ladder in the back about 10 years ago buzz's bay coalition came in uh that they spent uh, about a half a million dollars um and the the waterway from the from the beginning of the south pond that's the start of the accretion river that ends ends out into you know ultimately new bedford harbor into buzz's bay and uh, it's all granite, uh, huge granite blocks uh, that create this this channel that was built um, for that. And there's, there's a couple different different uh, reasons with that. One was for manufacturing because there's a there's some manufacturing along the river, um, but it was a controllable location where they could flow. They can control the flow, the the height of that south pond, and they can control the flow of the river. Um, that flows out of, of the South Pond that, that starts the Cushionet River. Um, we, there was a, there's a farm on the river and the gentleman that owned the farm was, was managed that, that, the height of that for a long time. Um, and then Buzz's Bay came in about 10 years ago. They built the fish ladder um, and it now creates a direct chute. The granite wasn't the right um, steps, you know, because they call it a different type of fish ladder, uh, a fish steps or a step ladder. Uh, for herring that come up from from the ocean, they'll come up and come up that fish ladder, and they got they got to a point where they had to stop uh, because they they just couldn't make that run anymore, uh, just the base the the way the granite sat, sat in there um, in its presence in its present day. So they built this long channel again, about a half million dollars in this fish ladder, and allows the heron to come up into into Lake Street. Um, there's a gateway on that. Um, that that should be managed. Uh, it is manageable. Uh, I think Buzz's Bay, uh, they their their people uh, come in at the right time of the year, and, and whether they open it or or lessen it or remove it. But what happens is if it stays open, the water drains out out the bottom as a fast shoot rather than the old 
than, rather than the old waterfall area of a granite blocks that we used to be there. So it's important that that, you know, it, it's just a great little little bit of history for all of that. Um, and that there's a, you know, the nonprofit like Buzz's Bay were able to get in there and, and utilize um, that space to be able to get, you know, restoration back for the herring. Um, but knowing that that's back there, uh, it's also a means of, you know, that pond possibly getting too low um, if, if it's not managed correctly. I just don't know, um, you know, I, you know, who, or if that's just being done. Okay. Great. Any, uh, anyone else have any thoughts about that pump house slash South Pond? Um, hey, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Of course. Um, like Eric, I do live on that pond. Um, I've been on the pond for 20 years. Uh, when we first purchased this land, I was able to fish right off my shore, um, right into the ocean, uh, my ocean, right into the pond without any, without any uh, issues. Um, now we have, we have a dock that rolls in and out. That's probably about 25 feet long. I still can't fish off that uh, in my pond because the weeds are so thick. This pond has, we have to take care of the weed problem. It choked out this pond. There is no water flow. It's turning into a swamp. Um, there are, there are, there is a channel like Eric talked about in the middle, um, but it's making it almost impossible to fish and to utilize. So this pond, and I'm sure the old North pond or the town beach pond that we're calling it now, um, is the same thing. When I was a kid, we used to ice fish in the back we had, and we used to go fishing in the back and there was weeds, but I was uh, on a call down the back of the pond uh, about a year ago and I could not believe the amount of growth. Um, I think if we eliminate those, the weeds are, are eliminated, reduce those weeds significantly, it will open up that pond for a bunch of resources. So, I mean, living on the pond, my biggest concern about what we have to do for that pond is to clean it up. As far as fishing off the road, um, once again, there's only certain areas you can fish at certain periods of time because the weed growth along Main Street in that area is so high that once a weed grows out, they, you can't use fish. There's only certain areas near where the running water is in the culvert where people can utilize. So it, it restricts all that access uh, for what we did the guardrails for. So if we can figure out a way, I don't know, and I don't know if that means making it deeper or what, but if we can figure out a way to reduce the growth of those weeds and then maybe spread that fishing along Main Street with the guardrails, bump it back into the pond a little bit further. We can utilize that area even more. Um, if people just want to park at Lake Street, walk across the walk, you know, crossways, that would be, you know, safe that they're fishing behind the guardrails. Uh, that'd be great, but the, the weeds in that pond, in the North Pond, in my opinion, as someone who's lived there, is, is brutal. Just brutal. And that's, that's the kind of input. So, you know, as we're going through this process, we're, I think just organically, we're um, getting our focus, you know, which, which is really good. So, you know, we, the, the Tom Smith pond doesn't really lend itself to much activity. That's more of an aesthetic thing that, you know, we need to do just to tune it up, make it look pleasing to the eye. The other pond across the street, we're calling that the North pond, uh, a little more conducive toward to activity, fishing, kayaking, you know, trails, the beach is the beach, right? And that's the number one priority there is the beach and the shoreline and how to make that usable. What I'm hearing here is that with this uh, Pump House South Pond, really that's your, your biggest bang for your buck from a fishing standpoint, getting those weeds taken care of with the, the long-term goal of having some docks or piers there uh, to really enhance that. But you can't you know, if you don't get the, the water taken care of and the fishing quality taken care of, then the docks don't make and the piers don't make sense. So I think this process is helping us sort of get a, 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 a focus and where the priorities lie for each of those areas. And I think, you know, if we take that approach, um, I think we might be able to, we might be onto something. Um, anything else in that area? So it sounds right, the getting the water quality to where it needs to be. I know, I know David mentioned uh, 
some type of access for boats. There's mm -hmm. a there's a sign there. It's on the side of the street that says car topping only. And there's a small little parking area. You could probably fit a, a small car. Um, I don't know what we could do for any kind of a boat launch there. Uh, what there is now is pretty much like an road, almost like a, a piece of the land is just eroded from runoff that comes down from the street where you know people will launch their kayaks from. So I don't know if we want to kind of shape that area a little bit to flatten it out, make it a little bit safer for people to launch John boats or uh, kayaks or something to that effect, because it, it it almost comes down in a V shape where people are actually launching their kayaks and boats from. Uh, so you know maybe we want to kind of change the slope of that a little bit and make it a little bit you know safer for people to use. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just one small little area, um, but it, you know it should be adequate enough for people to launch small boats and kayaks from. Uh, the weeds are a serious problem on that pond, like uh, on that pond, like Gary mentioned. Uh, so they solitude is going to, you know, chemically treat that along with the other two ponds, and dredge Tom Smith. So hopefully we can get that problem addressed. Um, other than that, for that pond, it, it, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of fishing pressure like the other ponds do, just because. Like Gary mentioned, there's only so many spots you can actually fish from. So maybe, uh, you know, with, with what the DPW did with cutting back some of the brush there, it, it opens up some of the areas for people to fish. Uh, I believe there's enough of a buffer from the edge of the street to the edge of the pond where people will feel safe fishing from the shore over there. So I, I think overall, you know, just a little bit of improvement there, you know, with a little boat launch area. Uh, you know, I, I, I know people see the sign there, but I don't think sometimes they pay attention to the sign that says car topping only. Uh, I've, I've actually seen some people just park their car there and, you know, walk down and, you know, instead of parking in the parking lot because they're too lazy to walk across the street, they'll park their car there and open up their rear hatch and just, you know, pull our tackle box out and fish right from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Um, Dave, can I yeah. ask a question? Sure. Um, I know when Dan did the shoulder work, I'm pretty sure there was a plan generated from uh, Lance of Air. Can you check into that to see if yep. there is any um, actually topographical plan? for that stretch of road, or even if it's just a piece or the whole thing. And if possible, if we could uh, have Dan reach out to them or and get a cat file, um, give me something to play around with. I could put Google Earth behind it and and I can start talking and you know, doing some things like Scott's talking about, just kick some ideas on paper. Um, any of that permitting I can handle through the Conservation Commission, um, you know, so, I'm pretty sure there was a sir. I want to say I, I saw the plan, but I'm not positive. Okay. Um, I want to so, say that he went, you know, he did some filing with conservation for it. And if there's a way to get that CAD file, it'd be uh, immensely helpful. Okay. And we might want to consider if we do get that, you know, maybe for uh, short money, we could uh, uh, do some RSPs and, and get some more additional work done that would help uh, Al with his crew at Old Colony and myself. You know, start putting something on paper that we can maybe things that we can do now. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. But I will say this: I I think that before we spend a nickel on Tom Davis pond dredging, we really need to take care of the weeds on all the other three ponds. It is uh, Gary's right on. No matter, I it's so aggravating to try and fish in so many spots, and uh, they are totally out of control. And I don't care what we spend. We, it's not worth spending a nickel on anything else unless we take care of all the weeds the way that they need to be taken care of. Well, that was, you know, look, that was the, that was the rationale for this committee. You know, it was getting the water quality where it needs to be. Uh, we obviously want to look at the safety aspect of it, which I think is going to be Gary and Eric's recommendation on what we need to do there from a safety standpoint. And then this beautification piece of it, you know, is going to be the, 
the sweat equity, the in-kind donations, the, the vision of how to just kind of clean things up. And it's going to be a work in progress, you know, but, but make no bones about it. The water quality is, I think, the number one priority. Um, and that's where the focus should be. So the fun stuff, in my opinion, is the area sort of in between the North Pond and the beach. There's, you know, there's a bunch of uh, stones that have, uh, that have been piled up there. Um, so any thoughts there on how to utilize that for, you know, is it, is it picnic tables? Is it uh, a swing set? Is it uh, an amphitheater? Gary, uh, what say you? Sorry about that. Um, I believe those rocks were there because we were planning on extending the area of the pump house pond mm -hmm. further down towards Main Street for areas for them to fish. However, that uh, just never came through. We were going to extend okay. that area. That's what those were. I believe those were donated to us when they were doing, I want to say, the solar farm um, given to the town, and we left them there for that reason. Um, so those should be, we could utilize those uh, to yep. extend. So that's what that plan was. Okay. Yeah, Dan, um, concur. Dan told me, Dan when I told me himself that he's going to continue with the boulders. That's what they're there for. Yep. He just hasn't had the time to do it, but the idea is to continue the shoulder of the road. It, you know, I don't know if it'll be on the, you know, like Gary said, that the pump house pond along that shoreline. I'd like to see that happen on the other side, the Northeast pond too. Um, you know, get people safer spot to fish. So in that middle area, um, you know, just some thoughts that come to mind. Uh, obviously some, I think picnic tables, um, you know, I don't know, like a, a gazebo. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Or is that an area where in a, in a non COVID time where you could have some food trucks, uh, you know, or have a band play there at night or during the day on a Saturday afternoon. Um, is that just like the more, more of like a lounging area? I don't know if you've been out to the, um, behind the council on aging, Jim Merritt and his team, they built this really nice pavilion uh, behind the council on aging. You know, does that lend itself to something like that? Some covered space with some picnic tables, um, you know, something that comes to mind, whether it's with, um, with metal, or wood, something, you know, like you go down Route 18 in New Bedford to downtown, they've got the uh, NB, you know, and the, uh, they put in hedges, you know, do we, something that is really um, eye-catching that spells out Lake Street, you know, whether it's a wood in wood with lighting or metal or shrubbery that, you know, like really stands out almost like when you're pulling into a golf course and you've got something that really looks nice and defines that area, um, an area that people can go and, you know, families can hang out and have a nice picnic. That, that's my, that's what comes to mind over there. Again, I think kind of short money stuff and little gardens and plantings and things like that. I don't know how you guys feel about that at all. Uh, I think that might be in the, an old colony's wheelhouse right there, Al, you know, take a look at it and get the creative minds around that and come back with a, a suggestion there, you know? Sounds like we need a landscape architect. <laughs> yeah. A volunteer. So, you know. Yeah, if I may, there, there was some mention of, of possibly doing or getting some type of survey. Uh, what type of survey are we talking about? Do you want like a bathymetric survey so that you can actually survey the bottom of the ponds or do you want uh, a, a survey of like the street area and the parking area so that we have an idea of what we have. I mean, what, what's, what's some of the ideas that are floating out there? You well, know, I, I'll, I'll defer it to the engineers and the, uh, the guys on the, uh, much smarter than me on that. So we'll defer to Dave, Al, and Scott, your engineer. So I don't know what, what do we need over there? You know, do we need to know, uh, where we stand or? But, because I was, I was thinking that if you, if you wanted to get just a general idea of what we have uh, picture wise, uh, anybody that has a drone, uh, we've actually done surveys where we use drone deploy. Brian did that. Uh, Brian yeah. Dugan is a committee member. I think he sent to us 
uh, some photos that he took with his drone with a drone but if they need something a little more detailed is that what you're saying or? yeah because what what drone deploy does is it kind of takes uh grid pictures and it blends them together so you have an overall view of the entire pond instead of it being in tiles it kind of stitches the tiles together creates one giant picture uh, and also from that you can uh, you can get somewhat of an accurate survey. Uh, I don't know the logistics of how it actually works, uh, but it's fairly accurate. It's not the same as somebody going out there with a transit and, and a rod and actually doing a, an on the ground survey. Uh, but you know, I know there was some mention, like David mentioned, about you know surveying or or, or getting some type of topographic idea of what we have out there along the road. So I was just curious what uh, you know what everyone thinks what we're trying to achieve or what we're looking for as an end result. I'll defer to again. I'll defer to the the engineers in the group or somebody other than me. Yeah. You know. um, well, if if, uh, if somehow there's a topographical survey of at least the road and beyond uh, a bit, it it would allow uh, for either Al with Old Colony or myself to start creating some CAD files for presentation purposes. It would help us illustration wise, put some real concepts on paper, um, mm -hmm. such as how we manipulate that area where we can create a better bolt launch um, on the boathouse pond, uh, the uh, pump house uh, pond, um, or, or uh, create more parking area, whatever. It, it could be anything really. But it's just, yeah. it, it allowed me to at least put something on CAD that we can illustrate and use for however we move forward with trying to get funding. Is, yeah. is that something you guys can handle uh, or Dave or Al, like, can you sort that out and figure out who can do that? Because again, that's a little bit beyond, I wouldn't even know what to ask for, so. Um, yeah, because we might be able to use the information that's available by Mass GIS, where, yeah. you know, they, they've already got somewhat of a topographical survey of pretty much the entire state. Uh, usually it's based by region or town. Uh, a lot of that information is available. It's free information. All you gotta do is just grab it off the website. Yep. Uh, you know, it depends on what you want to use it for. I mean, if you're, you know, actually going to use it for grading or, or, or site work, you know, it's got a, it's got some, you know, limits of error uh, in in the work. Uh, but if you're just getting a general idea of what you've got for, you know, elevations and contours that are out there, that may be one route that we can go. Yeah, see, if, if I could get a CAD file from, uh, I have a hunch, I think I know who did it, but I'm not positive. But if, if Dan and I could get the CAD file, um, then I could, from there, I can use LIDAR data and I can get all the bathymetric survey of the ponds. I, can, I need something to start with as a base. I mm -hmm. think it's there, it's out there. And then put Google Earth image behind it. You'd be amazed at what we could produce just for illustrations for going to the CPC and get more money right. with to actually have some plans and something you can see, you know? And so that, that's kind of where I was going with it. I right. think there's a baseline to start with. Um, so Dave, uh, can you do me a favor? So we're, we're like, um, as I mentioned, Amanda's gonna help us out with this stuff. If you can make a motion to ask Dan for what you need in this way okay. we'll have record of it and that we'll know that that's an, an action item that we need to follow on so okay um, i'll make a motion that uh chairman wona approach uh damanad to uh see if we can't get a cad file for any uh, uh topographical survey work that was done along lake street um along with, you know for the purposes of him upgrading the shoulders of the road okay um, for the purposes of us using it to further create some plans um, for moving forward. All right. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Um, all right, well, we've, we've now approached an hour and 20 minutes. Um, I think it's been a really great discussion. I, I know I've enjoyed it. Um, it's great to hear all these, uh, you know, uh, spirited ideas. Um, is there anything anybody wants to close you feel like we've missed or need to touch on? I would like to, if possible, have Eric and, and Gary and uh, Mr. Matten 
maybe just offline, you guys can talk about some of the, the, the safe, just come up with a punch list of safety improvements that you think need to take place from lighting to signage, the boating safety, anything that you feel requires attention on the safety side of it. And then we can get that to Al to as part of the plan. I think the water quality piece that speaks for itself, that's gonna be a solitude deal. So I think we're in good shape there. Um, Al, how do you feel? Do you feel like you've got something to work with and bring back to the students and, and at least get you off the ground here? Um, well, I, I think um, I think I still need a handle on kind of the, the primary areas that, that are being targeted here. I know the last time we met, um, you, there was like a beautification category subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you just talked about safety um, and is water quality its own thing? Is that a category? I think it is. So I think, you know, the theme of tonight's meeting, Al, was that beautification slash utilization. Um, you know, I thought we'd have a few more members here and this was sort of that brainstorm on how to approach it. And, you know, for lack of a better uh, plan, I thought we could go, you know, pond by pond and then that common area um, and I think we kind of did that tonight. And so on the, on the safety side of it, again, I'm going to defer to, to Gary and, and Eric and uh, Mr. Matten to kind of come up with a, a little game plan there, and then we can feed that to you. But I think this, this, what we talked about tonight might, you know, be something that we can put some focus on if that's okay. So are those the three main categories? Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes sir. So that's yep. what it is. Those those are the three. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Beautification, utilization, water quality, and safety. Those are the three pillars of this uh, of this committee. Okay. I think I think what we're going to start with is just kind of a, a master plan diagram, uh, where I'll try and get something to depict the area that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. As best we can. It's it's really just going to be a graphic right now, and we're going to identify each of the areas and each of the kind of bullet points or talking points for each of those areas. And as I said, um, I'm going to make that document or at least the, the, uh, the text document shareable and everybody could add to it. And then we'll kind of get it on a, a graphic an illustration and it'll just continue to build on it. Uh, at some point in time, when we narrow down specifics, for instance, the, uh, the, the old, um, Old Town Beach area, when we nail down specifically what it is that wants to happen there, we can get into more detailed drawings. Like David said, um, at that point, you know, we may need more detailed survey drawings, depending on once the scope is narrowed down and everybody's in agreement with it and we're ready to go forward. Um, you know, the, the information that we have for existing surveys might be adequate. It might require a little bit more, um, but um, as David said, we'll be able to we'll be able to generate with his help and our students. We'll be able to generate documents that, um, if it's the town of Akushnet DPW that's going to construct these things, we'll be able to provide them with the drawings they need to to actually you know put these things and build them and, and put them in place. Uh, typically, quite honestly, um, when you have infrastructure projects like this. A lot of this goes out to RFPs, there's design a selection, so on and so forth. So, you know, we're hoping to uh, minimize some of that and obviously, uh, you know, realize some cost savings uh, to the town and also utilizing town um, DPW, et cetera. That's, that's also gonna be a substantial cost savings to the town. So I think, you know, putting all our heads together, um, those are the steps that we can take to go forward. And you know what I've seen so far, I think there's a lot of pent up volunteerism around this project. There are, you know, I talked to a lot of people. I've got folks in town who, who cut trees down for a living. They say, look, you need anything, brush cutting, whatever, I'm in. You know, uh, you need me to build something, I'm in. Uh, so I think, you know, once we have our plan in place, then we can figure out, you know, what we need in the way of volunteers, what we need in the way of town, uh, you know, town resources, what we need in the way of, um, you know, stuff that we actually have to outsource. 
So I think Al, you know, your work here is going to be uh, critical for us. And, and look, we've got to pace ourselves, you know, in a perfect world, love to get it all done in year one, but that might not be realistic. And we've got to figure out what our main objective is. But if we can have some small wins along the way to show progress up above and beyond the water quality, then we should look for that too, you know, and uh, it's just like building a, building a home, right? It's going to take time. You're always going to be adding on and, and fixing it along the way. So it's not much fun getting it all done in year one because then you get nothing to look forward to. So um, I don't know. This was great, guys. I appreciate all your time and, and energy on this. If there's anything you want to offer to wrap it up, if not, um, we'll grab a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.